All right, so in previous tests, we had found, you know, some of our faster angles, but uh, the issue was that I didn't like how stable it felt in the cut. So today I'm seeing if I can kind of figure out what's causing that and so forth. And I figured to, uh, the, probably the first place I should go to is the bar, just in case it's the bar that's my issue. So basically I was planning on doing a video comparing 50 gauge and 58 gauge bar and chain setup. The problem is that my 50 gauge bars, I don't have any that are new enough that they don't have a little extra slop on them. So I've been kind of contemplating on how I do this, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw a 58 gauge chain into a 50 gauge bar that's kind of a little wore out, but it's it's a little snug. It's right here. Uh, it, it goes in the groove, but it's, you know, we're gonna notice it, but I wanna see if that changes how stable the cut is. There's a possibility that the things I'm not liking in the cut is the, the side play from the chain. Let me, let me try to bring you in here and show you a little closer what I'm talking about. So basically what I'm talking about is the side to side wiggle. You see how tight and snug this is? This is the 58 gauge chain in a 50 gauge bar. This is a little tight. It shouldn't be quite this tight. I can slide it through, you know what I mean? It'll slide through the rail. So it, you know, it, it has a little bit of wear into the bar. You know what I mean? But this is what an actual 50 gauge chain in this looks like. Uh, she's got a bit of slop to it. So this is 50 gauge in this bar. You can see the play. I'm wondering if this is what I'm feeling in the cut that I don't like. I might be blaming it on the sharpening when I'm, it actually might be the bar. You know what I mean? Makes sense? I hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna to try to do this 58 gauge chain in this 50 gauge bar that's kind of wore out a little bit. Uh, get it sharpened up and uh, see if we can get this to work. As you can see, she, she goes into the groove. She's just a little bit snugger. Um, maybe if this works out, just uh, I bet you just by a little bit of runtime, she'll kind of, you know, find its spot. But yeah, let's give this a try. Let's set up a try. We're gonna sharpen this chain exactly the same way as you know we have in the past. We're gonna make a couple of cuts and just just see if we can notice a difference in the way it feels. See if some of those issues I have been feeling before go away. Because then that'll tell us that the issue isn't the chain it's actually the play in the bar, you know what I mean? And this solution here about running a 58 gauge chain and a 50 gauge bar and getting it nice and tight and everything, that might be our solution for moving forward with even more aggressive angles. But I gotta sharpen this chain up and this one is a little different. This is a Husqvarna chain, but you know, we've been running steel RS chain, but this one is a Husqvarna chain. So we're going to sharpen it up exactly the same settings as before and see how she does. Now, just in case you're wondering, this is a 58 gauge chain in a 58 gauge bar. And both are new enough that, you know, it's, it's actually reasonable. This is a proper setup for 58 gauge. And you can see they don't have nearly as much slot. 58 gauge bars and the 63 gauge bars are a lot more stable on the side to side play than 50 gauge. So I think in, I'm wondering if my mistake might actually be running 50 gauge. So while I'm grinding here, I had some people, uh, they didn't come around and say it, but um, you know, kind of like take the hint kind of thing, but they're basically hinting at why I didn't start at like something more popular, like 25 degree on the top plate. Um, well, pretty much anybody who would do this kind of test would probably start out on a 25 degree top plate. I just, there's two reasons that I did that. 
One is, you know, why not start at 35? You know, it's pretty much as far as the grinder will go. But I was also at the time trying to copy, uh, at the time I made that decision, I was trying to copy Steele's 23RS. And I noticed that they, you know, I had to do a 12, uh, 35 degree top plate. So I decided, you know what, let's just go ahead and start with the 35 degree. We will get to some of those other ones later. I'm hoping some people will send me some suggestions on angles. That, uh, that they might want me to try. You know what I mean? There's a lot of uh, possibilities here. You know what I mean? You could go less steep here, more steep here. You could go less steep here, more steep here. There's all sorts of different ranges of motion here that we could try. So, you know, there's a lot of different possibilities. We could try setting this thing up at, uh, you know, 70 degrees with a 35 degree top plate. What would that do? You know what I mean? Uh, have, have you ever seen it? You know, there's a lot of possibilities here that we could do and try. This is just where I decided to start from. But today we're going to be running the 55 on up here on the tilt, the 35 degree at the top plate with the 10 degree tilt function active, just to see if we can improve the, the, the how stable the saw cuts in the wood. Um, we were having troubles. We were, I, I wasn't enjoying it as much um, as like using a zero setting. So I just want to see if we can improve that stability some. Hopefully this works because the, the, the chain is going to be a little tight in that bar. So so hopefully it works. You're probably going to hear it though. It's probably going to want to kind of sing. You know what I mean? It's probably going to sing a tune in the bar. It might even get a little hot. So we'll see. This This might be an interesting result here might see some unexpected stuff, you know? Just in case y'all missed it in a previous video, these glasses are what I would, or many of us call cheaters. They're like a bifocal with a 1.5 magnifying uh, magnifier built into like the bifocal part. So when I'm looking at this and I look through that bifocal part, it's basically like having a magnifying glass, 1.5 magnification. You would not believe how much this helps when grinding. It's like a game changer. All right, so I had issue. I completely forgot about, I was gonna use the alcohol saw and I can, it didn't even dawn on me about the bar mount. So we went to the pulling. Uh, now, if you're wondering if this is an easy thing to do, it's, it's really not. It sounds easier than it is. You can end up going through 50 bars till you find one that's wore out enough, you know, like I went through almost my entire 50 gauge bar collection until I found one that was wore out enough that I could get a 58 gauge chain in it. But then when I first started it, it took a minute. I had this thing uh, smoking. It was rolling everywhere. Definitely not, not a something for the squeamish. She's still get dragging a little bit. She's not letting the saw go to full free rev RPM. So it's still got a little bit of drag on it, but we're gonna give it a try. I really wanna see if this improves the, the stability of the cut. You know what I mean? Cause she always wants to get a little wonky on you through the cut when you get to these angles. So this, this whole thing, this all this stuff that I'm doing here is just to figure out if that issue is the slop of the chain in the bar. And by having it in this kind of a setup where it's really tight, this should, definitively tell me whether or not that's the issue you know what i mean so we'll make any further decisions on this modification in the future here after this but we're ready let's make some cuts all right now i have my event coming up at the end of this week so this is probably the last video i'm going to make until after the event and i'm probably going to make some videos from the event I'll, I'll just work at getting all that stuff out and then we'll get back into these normal kind of videos. So there'll little bit, be a little bit of break here uh, on these type of videos because of the event we got coming up at the end of the week. Uh, we got a weekend of fun and folks are coming and we're just going to have fun and enjoy yourselves. You know what I mean? So uh, if you haven't sent me an email yet, it's homelightsmitty at gmail.com. All are welcome to come. So, hey, we'll see you this weekend. <laughs> the last weekend of July, just in case... Uh, you're, you're wondering for future events. It is the last weekend of July. All right. 
Thanks. <laughs> So the oil hole is obviously not lined up. Uh, so I can't give you a 100% de de definitive answer, but I'm fairly certain. I think that did the trick. Um, here, let's see if you can see it. I left these on there. You see how straight the cut is? It's pretty straight. Uh, if I was on a 50 gauge setup or a 50 gauge bar with a 50 gauge chain, you'd notice that that crut was a little crooked and kind of like an S shape. And the chain's pretty freaking straight now. Um, and over here, where I took these cookies off, can you see? She's not perfect, but that's an improvement. I think part of that might have been me fighting the saw because they're, uh, we're not getting any oil in the chain. I'm trying to get this so you guys get a better, good view. So, what do you think? They look pretty straight. They would have never been like that before. I think we're on the right track here. I think a lot of our stability issues are coming from the bar chain, that sloppiness between the bar and the chain. So, I think what I'll do is I will fix that oiler issue, get that oil hole lined up, because it's obviously not there. Uh, there is no oil in that chain whatsoever. It is as dry as a bone. Um, and boy, was she really robbing power from that saw. But yeah, I think we're heading in the right direction now. All right, not a perfect test, you know. It was just kind of a... Let's see if we're at least heading in the right direction kind of test. And we definitely, I, 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 think, I think the results are telling me to, that I need to continue down this path. Um, so we're gonna work at getting this bar tweaked a little bit better. In fact, we'll probably just set this bar up with this saw and do the future testing with this saw and then just have it set up for this saw in the future. You know what I mean? Now, if you're curious, 
of how this chain feels in the wood. This is probably the best combination or best setup I've ever ran for oak. That's making oak feel more like a softer wood. Um, the problem is it takes a tremendous amount of torque. Uh, so if all of your torque is at like nine grand, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to let you know. Um, so, you know, that's, that's one of the things I keep saying about maybe a higher raker. This raker is at 25 thousandths. I, I don't know. I'm kind of going back and forth there. Did you see how easy it was to dog in and really plow into the wood? That's, I think I need to tame some of that down. So I don't know. I'm still on the fence about taking it to like a 22 or 23 thousand um, setup. So we'll see how that progresses. I might do up another chain at uh, a 20 thousandth raker and compare it to this chain. So maybe we'll do that. Same sharpening, two different raker heights. You know what I mean? And see if we can kind of tame some of that down. And it actually might go faster because it's not absorbing so much of the torque of the saw you know trying to plow through that wood but i will tell you that straight up this is the, the sharpening setup that makes oak feel soft so but the problem is the torque the amount of torque it takes is pretty freaking high that's why you see like uh, briscoe build his saws with so much torque behind them because it's because of the chains um, which is why you don't see me do many comparison videos. We'll get into that in the future. Um, kind of, this is kind of leading up to comparison videos. So you're, you'll see what I'm talking about here in the future. But yeah, um, there you go. Uh, we definitely made an improvement here. So we need to continue down this path a little more. And I got to figure out a way to control how... How much wood it's trying to eat at once and i think that's going to be a better raker setting so we'll leave this chain as is we'll sharpen up another one i think we'll do a video with sharpened on a 20 and a 25 thousandth raker i think that's where we're going to end up going and this is probably going to be and since this is probably going to be the last video until after my event um so you're probably going to have to wait just a a week or so until we get moving further down that path. Alrighty. So, Hey, I hope you enjoyed this one. We'll catch you on the next one later.